and, and you've had a, an unbelievably legendary uh, jiu-jitsu career. When you look back now at your competitive career in jiu-jitsu, who would you say, if, if you had to choose, was the most difficult opponent you ever faced? And also, perhaps also if you could uh, try to remember, what was, what, what, if you had to choose one victory, what was your most memorable victory in the sport? Man, I think it's, every victory has that meaning at that time, definitely. Every opponent that you had in the situation that you went through, for that time, was the fight. Then suddenly you have another fight that brought another history back into. I think to, to be involved in Jiu-Jitsu all my life and to be able to, to achieve and keep working, doing Jiu-Jitsu, spread Jiu-Jitsu all over the world, that I think is the biggest success we had. Because we remember 1990, going to America, we have no schools. Then in 1991, they have two schools. Now I'm asking you how many schools today we have around the world. Then we remember that we were the beginning of that, putting a little seed here, a little seed there. Now, how many trees and fruits to be collected are out there? And I know we, we were very important in the 90s for the spread of the art, and I think it was our biggest achievement was that to see how Jiu-Jitsu, how many people are involved in Jiu-Jitsu today. It was uh, unbelievable. If you have to do it again, we would not change anything. It was great. And, and how proud of you of the development you've seen uh, here in Toronto in, in terms of uh, the level of Jiu-Jitsu participation? Man, Toronto is like, for an example, in Canada in general, I would say that the Jiu-Jitsu guys now are good as the same as the hockey player. If Canada produce great hockey player, they now producing great Jiu-Jitsu fighters, definitely. You, uh, you guys are right on the top with any other country right now. And one thing um, I've been wanting to ask you is, what is your opinion about some of the newer techniques that are being used these days, such as the Barambolo and the 50-50? Jiu-Jitsu never stop their development. But you have to understand that you have two different aspects in Jiu-Jitsu. You have the sport Jiu-Jitsu, which we see in the tournament so many fantastic and very acrobatic movements, which are very good for the sport of Jiu-Jitsu, which make us go to the tournament and, wow, that was a cool move, and you see the development, it's non-stop. But at the same time, you have the other side of Jiu-Jitsu, which is martial arts which the techniques are not that fancy, are a lot sim simpler compared to those, but are more effective in a street situation. Because uh, a lot of the movements that you see in the sports aspect is not applicable to the street situation. Then people gotta understand that they have two different directions, which you can do both, be very good at both, but a lot of things that you apply in a jiu-jitsu tournament that you see, you should not try to apply that in a a real fight, because maybe the outcome in the jiu-jitsu sport is one that you're going to be happy, maybe on the street the outcome will be one that you might not be happy. It's important that you separate and evidently practicing one, you're going to be able to do both. But it's very important to street situations are a lot simple. You get to simplify a lot of the movements, which you don't have much to hold on. And that's what's happening right now. And I think it, the techniques we see in the sport today is unbelievable. The development, every tournament you see is a new movement coming up, and then you have the names, like, what, what, betting ball, what is that? Then you go you see how acrobatic. But again, you have two different directions that it's important for people to know that martial arts and the sports aspect. Jean-Jacques Machado, it's a real sure. pleasure. Thank you very much for doing this. Thank you, and keep watching.